Jump in my six four and let the top dine. Drunk hitting hard when I swing the yeah. H time. Cup full of oil and an orange cush sweet. Cause this is how we do it in that 713. My candy red paint cocked up on foe. Shocking and body rocking. All right. Well, What's up, Lauren? Hey, hey, it's a Thursday. My yes, name is it Lauren. Is. That does not rhyme. What's up, Jeff Michael? You know, I, for all our listeners out there, well, you you were just spitting some rhymes. Can you do it again? I was. I don't even know what I said. I was just rhyming with the word more. Show you some more. Walk out the door. Keep uh, going. Oh, man. Sorry. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't even know. I'm just... Just, just shooting some words. Just I, told, I just told you I was by myself all day. But you know what's not by itself? I'm in a freaking group text with about 15 girls, and it's nonstop. Oh no, it's no, nonstop. Thank you. What is this group text about, though? A bachelorette. Trip. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> and that's why it's nonstop. No, that's why way. it's nonstop. Uh, um, where, okay, yes. bachelorette. So, is there a trip plan? There's a trip plan. It's Mexico? at the end of this month. So we originally were gonna go to Mexico. Cabo. Tulum. Tulum. But she changed it because of all the craziness that, that's been happening, you know, and yet having that many girls go, it just oh probably wouldn't be for dude. the best. Maybe so you should keep everybody it. informed where y'all are going. So, like, the, the it's, <laughs> like it's stay to away. Miami. We're, we're going Miami? to Florida. We're going to Florida. Miami's yep, not bad. yep. I love I, Florida. I go to Miami uh, quite often. Parents are down there. Absolutely love it. But look, just guys, uh, welcome into Sports with Balls. Jeff Michael, Lauren Leal. We're over here at Christian's Tailgate, 2000 uh, Bagby in Midtown, home of Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, Monday Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Well, sorry, Wednesdays and Thursdays for us. I'm getting confused. But, man, incredible food here, drink specials. It's unbelievable. We're here live every Wednesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Man, come down and join us. Come join us, Jeff and I, and then also Jason, who sets yeah. up this production for us. Uh, what's going on, Jason? He doesn't have a mic yet, but maybe one day he will. He'll be able to chime in a little bit. But uh, he's been doing awesome on the production for the last couple of shows. we got some big news coming for you. Oh, and yeah. we got a big show tonight, per usual. Huge show tonight. And, like, you know, Jason's got these 4K cameras, and I had to start wearing makeup. You're wearing makeup today? I had to put on whatever it is. I, like, the little, because I thought I noticed Jason's a little cameras are, something. They're too good, and so I look all weird if I'm not putting something on. No, like, you're fine. So, you're fine. And especially next to Lauren. Like, I'm pale, and, you know, Lauren's tan. And, yet, like, Miami, like, like you need another tan. I t- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we'll see how it God. goes. We'll yeah, see we'll, how it goes. <clears throat> but, man, I'm excited. Today's show brought to you by attorney Brian White. Man, when if you are injured for any reason and need real results, call a real attorney. Attorney Brian White, 713-500-5000. 713-500-5000. That's the easiest number. I was going to say, that's so easy to memorize. <laughs> 713 500 You're hooked up. You know and when also- you're in jail? Though, uh, not you. I don't know if Lauren's ever been in jail. <laughs> but, like... You can't. You don't say, take, You don't have we, your phone with you, so you don't remember numbers, let's right? Say we're not getting into into, no. into Antonio Brown <laughs> just yet, oh. but we will be. Uh, we also got to thank Fitz Roofing, of yeah, course, yeah. Austin Fitz, uh, making a difference, serving people, driving, driven by our commitment to the community, focused on building relationships, not just revenue. Go, go to FitzRoofing.com. Yeah, check out their roofing supply. They're doing my roof. Very cool. Late January, I'm putting on a charcoal roof. Oh, yeah. are those like the thing now? Because you it know, is. yeah, with different like house houses, like you know, the trends change, like gray, white, dark browns, you know, whatever. So now it's charcoal. I've been in the drunk tank for 18 hours. It's terrible. Oh, I thought you meant like now Kevin Anthony was coming. I was like, you've been in the drunk. Like I've actually been, like I, no, I'm not gonna say that on air. <laughs> I'm not gonna say my the drunk tank's terrible though. I, I okay. I don't know what that is, but okay. <laughs> Uh, speaking of the drunk tank, Antonio Brown, let's get this show started. Bam! I don't like being this short. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so little. Uh-oh, uh, let's do this. What's this? That's the same song. I've never heard this. Oh, this song goes off. Fat Pat? Did you just say Fat Pat? Yeah, from H-Town. What's Fat Pat? Okay, all right. <laughs> Welcome back in to SWB. We took a little yeah. break. Now we're back with you. And uh, I never heard the other lyrics to that song before. Only oh, the first great. one. That's great. My boy Reckless. Uh, uh, 713 Anthem Reckless. Uh, it's, he's he's awesome um <laughs> you know it, it's funny <laughs> we, I, should we just jump into this like <laughs> let's do it uh before we get started
started, though, I was going to say that uh, we have a Houston coach, one season coach, A&M coach, and a nine-time bowl, well, taking colleges to nine bowl games, is coming back to Houston, and Kevin Sumlin of the Houston Gamblers, the USFL team of uh, Houston. So, yeah, we'll see a familiar face here in just a little bit away, 100 days away, the USFL, more football. Yay. I love it. I like, I'm excited <laughs> for more football. Let's I mean, see what look, it brings. Uh, the USFL, good job. I mean, I know the people in Houston are excited about that. Because, they love the XFL. Well, well, of course. They were 8-0, 9-0, whatever, before they canceled the XFL. Uh, COVID shut it down. And, uh, um, I, I, but all the other cities, I can't see them too excited about that. Uh, so there's eight teams, I believe, in total. So seven others in uh, different cities. And I got a list of them here if you want to hear them. But uh, – we got so much more to get into. Just, yes. just going off the list of that this morning. So, Let's what go. Let's a <laughs> what a roller coaster the name Antonio Brown is. Insane. Okay, so let's just talk about what happened since Sunday's game to now. Sunday's game, he left in the third quarter. Bucks versus the Jets, basically quitting, taking off his jersey and pads, leaves the game. Peace out. Okay. To this morning, he releases a statement of text messages. Who does that? Text messages between him and allegedly Bruce Arians, head coach of the Buccaneers, saying uh, just different, different, just their communication between each other. And yeah, then, it was, I mean, him saying that he was injured. It, he didn't really say he was injured. Uh, uh, it, Bruce Arians was saying, look, we're playing through injuries, right? We're playing the games. Yeah. And he was like, all right, well, just, you know, and he was like, let me know how you feel. Like, you know, we're ready to go. And he was like, whatever you need, coach. Like, Yeah, and uh, what have we seen Aaron Rodgers do for the last weeks, weeks, weeks Anybody in the NFL. Us, everybody in the NFL is injured. through that toe injury. Everyone's injured. Everyone's it's injured. It's the end of the NFL season. The That's end, how it everyone goes. Is. Okay, so later this afternoon, the Bucks released the wide receiver and Antonio Brown from the organization. And what did he expect to happen? If you walk off the game and you take off your attire and leave, I mean, did you expect anything different if you're Antonio Brown? This is the last straw, right? This is the last time we will see him in the NFL, right? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. Like, there were some memes out there about him going to Dallas, which I think would be hysterical. <laughs> like, just go ahead because they lost uh, Gallup. But, you know... There's two schools of thoughts on this Antonio Brown thing, right? There's people that are for him. There's people that are against him. Um, and when he originally ran off the field, it was people were for him. Or it, it, some people were for him, right, because he said he was injured. He said that there were some things going on that he couldn't play. And so people were like, oh, well, that you know, why? Why are you forcing the guy to play? Then, then – more information starts coming out. It turn, Come to find out that at halftime or right before halftime and going into halftime, he had gotten upset, really upset with Bruce Arians and Tom Brady about his targets because he's trying to reach a bonus. This is all to do with money. Of course it is. And he's trying Always. to reach his bonuses, and he was upset about the targets. Now, this – and so he gets mad at Tom Brady at halftime apparently, and there's a blow-up in the locker room, and the players have to hold him back. Why – Tom Brady's the one that brought you to this team, got you a Super Bowl, like – revived his whole career. I don't think Tom Brady's trying to not throw the ball to Antonio Brown. It's just Tom's Tom. Who's ever open, he's, he's going to throw the ball to. So that started the whole downfall, and then apparently they come out in that third quarter, You and then, you know, the rest is history. Like you see the blow up, you see uh, Bruce Arians say, get in the game, and he's like, no, I'm not going, and then boom, here we are. Now, releasing text messages and your bank account information, calling out Tom Brady, calling out Tom Brady's trainer, you should have stopped with, my ankle was hurt, I didn't want to play. <laughs> Everyone, I believe, is on the train now. You said that the people were on two sides of the spectrum here. No, I'm sure that everybody is still, uh, you know, kind of cure. Everyone's like, why would you do that? Why, why would you? This is the last time that you will be seen in an NFL uniform because you've had your shot time and time again. The GOAT himself brought you to his team, as you just stated, yep. to win a Super Bowl. You do it, and now you're going to act up like this? You, you you think that you have nine lives and you're a cat. Yeah, so far you have. This is your ninth one. Scratch. You're out. I don't know. I'm this, sorry. This might be seven because uh, you got to think that there's going to be a team out there that's lacking because of all the COVID stuff or injuries that but he's free now. But who wants that cancer well, in their locker room? <laughs> so that brings me back to a point. Tampa Bay had to know this was coming. Look, when you sign Antonio Brown, 
you know what you're uh, you know what you're getting into, mm-hmm. and they knew what they were getting into. Now, if you look at the grant, like the bigger picture, was he serviceable? Did he win? Did he help win a Super Bowl? Did he do it? Yeah, he did. But this was a this was going to happen. Like you know, the last three teams he's been on, this has all happened, and almost in the exact same fashion. So last week, Antonio Brown and his agent. This is before the blow up. Last week, his agent and him requested the remaining of his $2 million in incentives. Last week. So you, this was a pot that was boiling and mm-hmm. just about to blow up. And Antonio Brown with his shirt off. So this is a reason <laughs> why I don't like the NIL, because I don't want college kids to just be focused on hitting yeah. all of those points, getting the targets, whatever sport they're playing, just to get that get those incentives you yeah. know what i'm saying um but it's a team game and tom's gonna tom's gonna throw to who he wants to throw to like you said and if he's open he would throw to him if not then he's not going to and the injury was not part of this yeah i mean it's turning look he at at first it was about the injury right so everybody thought uh, and, and some people were on his side like oh he was hurt they were trying to force him to play um, and then even Bruce Arians in his press conference today was like, yeah, man, I told him to play and he didn't want to. So I told him to get the F out. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's just coaches. He didn't tell him to take off his shirt and, you know, run around or whatever. And there was obviously a blow up prior to that that we nobody knew about at, at halftime. And and then it's and, and, and true Antonio Brown fashion has turned this into a circus, mm-hmm. an absolute circus. I. I don't know who would put up screenshots between them and their boss. And his bank account info. Like, all the numbers. I know. All of them. I know. Who? <laughs> what? Like, are you kidding me? Like, this dude. But you think there's ah. possibly a way that he can be back in the league with another 100%. team. Because, look, the, the team that's depleted the most right now going into the playoffs are the Tampa Damn Bay man. Buccaneers. No Chris Godwin. A.B. is supposed to fill in that spot. No A.B. So... It's just uh, Rob Gronkowski. That's it. That's uh, all he has to And Mike to. Evans. Mike Evans injured. Mike Evans. Mike um, Evans. But uh, look here. What? No the, Leonard Fournette. Where else? Where else, Jeff, could Oof. Antonio Brown fit in to where you actually be serviceable and a team, Oof. a team, he would get the targets. A team would want him. Uh, you know, the Packers need a wide receiver. Uh, the Cowboys just lost Gallup. You're looking at playoff teams. You know, you're looking at Tennessee. I mean, it's... Uh, I don't know. What are you trying Henry, to, Derrick Henry's coming back. Yeah, what are you trying to get? I mean, you know what you're getting into. But the fact... If you're if you're going just on football and and how owners work and... G, if you're trying to win a Super Bowl, he's a two-time Super Bowl champ. This guy can help you win a Super Bowl. You just have to know what's going to happen mm-hmm. <laughs> like you have to accept that like all right i'll take this part of it just know what's coming right it says it doesn't matter if you sign him to a one day a 10 day a, a, a six month a one-year contract you know what's going to happen yeah. now are you willing to risk your locker room and uh, and possibly getting a super bowl for that for antonio brown and all his antics like do you want text well you're sure not texting him anymore like i can tell you that <laughs> like that who Man, this goes back to what you and I were discussing uh, earlier today. It's like you're not th- there's a there's a code of ethics in in any professional sports. You do not share stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That is a no. personal text message between you and your coach. I don't care what the money. And it goes back to the Astros thing and it goes back to there's, there's other people that have done this. I just got to tell you. I mean, thinking about it and looking on this morning while I was watching uh, get up and all of the other sports shows. I was like, are they really showing this right now? It They're was really wild. showing these me- these messages uh, amongst him and the coach. I just, I, it baffled me. I never seen anything like this. But then again, I don't think we've ever dealt with an Antonio Brown in the NFL. Do you think anybody else's actions compare to his? We've seen players with domestic violence, with going to you know DUIs, drunk driving, As- different things like this. But does anybody else compare to Antonio Brown's antics? Okay, so as far as in and out of the league, Josh Gordon, right? So, Josh Gordon, as but, far as drugs, but yes. But see, Josh Gordon, there's a difference. He, he has an addiction problem, right? Right, and he's not he's not a nuisance, and you know you know what you're dealing with, but he doesn't cause drama like this. Josh Josh Gordon has been in and out of rehabs, and you know that there's an addiction issue there, and that's the only person it's almost comparable to. But as far as like antics and. Being a locker room cancer like Antonio Brown, I, I don't know. Like, I don't think ever. But, again, two-time Super Bowl champion. Like, won one last year. And then, uh, I, I don't – in 
it, it's hard to decipher like what goes through somebody's head like this. And I think that's too why a lot of the media or people that have played with him and now our commentators are mentioning, you know what, this guy, I hope he gets the help that he deserves. Well, I mean, the, the, the help the, that he needs rather. The extra stretch for me was calling out Tom Brady and Tom Brady's trainer and posting those messages. Like, dude, you don't call out the GOAT or his trainer. It's not like they're bad people. They have not done anything wrong. Like, Trust me, <laughs> I'm like, sure wow. everybody in the world is on Tom Brady's side. Yeah, okay. that's what I'm saying. Like, regardless. So, apparently, he wanted some work done by Tom's trainer. It was $100,000, um, and he already paid Tom's trainer, and he never got the work done. And he released these text messages. And then that's where he put his bank account info. He's like, send me the money. And uh, Tom Brady's trainer is like, yo, like, what? Uh, you know, of course, man, like, you know, sorry things didn't work out, blah, blah, blah. Now, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of other messages. But my point is, you do not – this is the Mike Fires deal. It really mm. is. When's the last time Mike Fires pitched in the in the MLB? Mm. He hasn't. He's always so you're, injured. But, but you're, refer, you're whatever. referring this to to the whistleblowing of the Astros. Yes, I'm I'm I'm, I'm referring to locker room stuff, text messages that go between between teams, and and this goes in every sport. There's been a person that's done it almost in every single sport. Those are private things. You there do not put those things. text messages between you and your head coach or your quarterback or your trainer that and especially involve money and put it out there. Cause now Tom Tom Brady's trainer is like, Dan, everybody knows how much I charge for this. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, those are private, private things. And it, it's it's a code of ethics that I think is going to get him at least halfway blackballed from the NFL mm -hmm. as far as players are concerned. They're going to be like, whoa, I don't trust you if, as far as I can throw you. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying about Mike Fires about coming out with information that is just, you know, it's supposed to be sacred. It's to yes. the team. It's to the locker room and the locker room only. But, uh, yeah, two completely different scenarios. You're dealing with a guy who is not right and you're dealing with someone else who wanted revenge and i think that's what that was about as far as mike fires goes yeah but it's you know releasing personal information like that is it, this man this is <laughs> the bucks released him today obviously like you said and this isn't over <laughs> like this is antonio brown and here's a guy that has the his attorney right so three weeks ago his attorney said no 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 he didn't get a fake vaccination card that's his lying to all of us then he got suspended for three weeks because it was a fake vaccination but look, card. And you know what? And you know what? Before that, there was another instance, and they said Antonio Brown has one more scratch by Bruce Arians, and the vaccination card was going to be it, but they let it slide. You know, getting having a fake vaccination card, they let it slide. They kept him on the team, and then this happened. So he really gave him two more chances. Yeah, I mean, because of injuries and whatever. And again, you know, AB was going after, this is all about money. This Look, whole thing. you know, if you're going to throw off, if you're going to take off your jersey, take off your pads, peace out in the middle of a game, the middle of a game, not after the last snap is played. <laughs> uh, then, Kevin, Kevin says Antonio Brown will be dead broke in five years. Man, I'm talking five months. Yeah. That's why he needs all. That's why he needs all those uh, bonuses. This is again. He I read. Financial I read you earlier. He needs, an, a, he need, he needs a, a counselor. He needs a lot of different resources that the NFL provides. And that's what I don't understand about these guys is that you can literally for any issue you're having in your head with your body, your mentality, yeah. whatever it is, they've got it for you're you. You're fully insured. And that's why I don't understand you, Deshaun Watson, because. <laughs> oh, cool. you you could have had any list of masseuses out there from go. the NFL to massage any part of you oh, that was man. hurting, and you went down that route with 22, 22 women if they oh, come man. out to be true. I'm just saying, <laughs> makes no sense. A.B., you too, because... Lauren just went went off on Watson. <laughs> for Antonio Sorry. Brown to watch. Hey, I love it's it. Still the NFL. It. No, it's and, still and, football. And, and look, all right. Deshaun Watson. We were talking yesterday. Deshaun Watson is still an incredible talent. If he ever gets that stuff behind him, there's so many teams that need him. Imagine putting him on Pittsburgh. Imagine putting him on Cleveland. Right. All these incredible mm -hmm. rosters that are just you know barely there. Cleveland was the most uh, underperforming team in the NFL. If he goes to Cleveland, what happens to Baker Mayfield? Well, I mean, we don't know yet. We don't know if Baker's leaving, but I mean, he's got death threat from the fans. He's got, you know, it, it's not a then fun again, time. He has again, problems with coaches, problems with players, problems look, with fans. Like, ouch. I was gonna say, whenever you talk about the fans, I mean, every player is gonna have fans that hate him. You sure, know? but not death threats. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. We just don't know it because it's not public. Y'all got massage parlors in Cleveland. Hey, <laughs> y'all got a Red Bull out there. Y'all got a Red Bull out there. I can take one right now. But uh, yes, thank you. Okay, so for the, I was just gonna say. 
if you know that you're going to do all these things, you got to look at the consequences. And it's kind of like think before you speak. Know what you're doing before you do it. Even though Jeff doesn't do that at all. No, I. It's okay. I don't either. <laughs> Sometimes I just talk and it's just like, blah. My filter it comes out. Is sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, look, like you know, another note on Antonio Brown. Is he going to get back in the NFL? If I'm, I would say, yeah. Teams, look, I mean, he's he's made it. He keeps coming back, and there's somebody, there's somebody out there that's going to say, hey, look, uh, he. He won a Super Bowl, and he's still serviceable, and he's still fast. And But is his ankle okay? I mean, there's so many things. The Antonio Brown story is not over. No, I don't think so I, I, I just I don't see it being over. Well, like the thing is, I mean, you could write that book. God, yeah, man. That is, It's literally so, so much. Jason, Since 2017. yes or no, you think he's going to be back in the league? No, no. no. Calls, I don't no. either. I don't either. Since 2017, it started uh, about 2017, early 2018, and for now, going on four years, it's it's been a unbelievable roller coaster with this guy. Mm-hmm. And you know, like I said, Josh Gordon's been back and forth, back and forth. But you know his issue, and he's not causing issues off the field, anything like that. But I mean, look, Tampa Bay knew exactly that th- something like this was going to happen. And again, I told you, they requested money a week ago and Tampa Bay denied them. Mm-hmm. So you, if we would have known that information, I would have told you straight up, like, oh, wow, he's about to go. Ew. Oh, she wants the yellow one. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so <laughs> much. You're amazing. Uh, for those of you just listening and not seeing, I was just delivered a <laughs> Red Bull. Oh, you my are, goodness. They're uh, amazing. I needed a little to, bit of extra The show's today. about to get real interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren and Red Bull. Here we go. Here we go. Taking one sip and then and then we are on a ride. <laughs> oh man! But uh, look, you know, last night okay. on Antonio Brown, Tampa Bay knew what they were doing. I think he'll be back in the NFL. And look, for me and you, and for anybody in media, this is incredible content. Keep it up. Jeff says that every time <laughs> something crazy happens. Oh, we can do we can do an entire show on Antonio Brown and Deshaun Watson. <laughs> I mean, you just called Might Deshaun. Might as well go to Ben Roethlisberger, too, since he just had his last game at their home Watson. stadium. You okay. called Deshaun out. That's awesome. I'll All right. <laughs> Let's get to it's that time of year, week 18. We are entering into it this weekend, and Ooh. that means we are going to find out who is the most valuable player very, very soon. We have three guys that we think are going to be on here, plus a couple more, uh, if you say so. But uh, all of these guys make very good arguments as to why they could be MVP. We talked about these guys a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They've remained to stay there. However, there is a new one in the Bengals. So let's get it started out with, uh, you know, I said MVP race candidates, Aaron Rodgers. And the statement came out today by, uh, you know, an award voter. He's a Chicago sports writer, Hub Arkush. Uh, He's not voting for him because of off-the-field issues, because of his character and his decisions off the field, which makes no sense because, hello, you're (laughs) judging them for being the most valuable player, what they do with the football and on the field. He has since called back those comments and said he's sorry. Uh, He has. (laughs) So Aaron Rodgers Rodgers comes out today and goes, you know what? That guy's a bum. He's a straight up bum. He doesn't even know who I am. He's never met me before and he wants to he wants to talk about me and who I am off of the field whenever you've never even shook my hand. This guy's a straight bum. I'm not listening to that noise and I'm like, "You know what? Go for you, Aaron Rodgers because you got to keep that confidence. Keep your head up. Get off that toe." And 50, just win some games. There's 50 voters. Rodgers does not need that guy to vote. No, for him. <laughs> like he he won last year, and uh, there were six votes that he that, that didn't vote for him. That's it. So he got 40. He got 44 votes last year of the MVP. So is he gonna get MVP two years in a row? Okay, <sighs> man. Wow. So we've got. Burrow and and T.J. Watt, right? Um, those are those are our three. That, that's who we think is probably up there. If people are going to vote for your MVP, if you've got any other to, ones, let us know. I just have to say this though about Aaron Rodgers, I feel like he is in the news every single week, regardless of what it is. Well, that's because he goes on another show and he talks all the time. I mean, like he just. I feel like he's best friends with Pat McAfee. Yeah, that's. Well, I mean, that's what I was going to get at. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we're on sports with balls. <laughs> all right, all right, Come yeah. So we were talking about uh, the other MVP candidates and. T.J. Watt. He is about to break a single season sack record. The only person above him that holds the record is Michael Strahan, hometown boy here, uh, with 22 and a half sacks. Well, Watt sitting with 21 and a half. 
So he could he could very well break that this weekend when Pittsburgh is going to visit. Uh, they're going to be playing against the Ravens. Yeah, and even uh, John Barhall, John Harbaugh said, I think he's the best defensive player in the league. He missed two games this year, and he he's going to break the and sack record. And he's still up there. Yeah. So I mean. Did like, you see? <laughs> did you see the package or the story rather about uh, T.J. Watt breaking into J.J. Watt's notes no. and reading all of his notebook and saying, Good "Oh my gosh!" Him. Like this was before he came into the league and realized, like, because so J.J. Watt apparently writes down everything from every single game that he does. What he, what's going through his mind, his thought process, different play calls, and so he snuck into his house. Not snuck into his house. He was in his house one day. Snuck into his room, found it. Started reading them. Yeah. Uh, TJ, if you get that book, man, uh, fork it over. <laughs> what? To, are you going to go out there? <laughs> I'd love to read it. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to read it. Yeah, um, yeah look, TJ Watt, Defensive Player of the Year for sure. His brother, uh, uh, JJ, has three of them. Uh, he's on pace, obviously, at this at, at the rate that he's going to be better than JJ Watt, and that's that's unreal. Like, that is phenomenal. And if, if you're in Pittsburgh and you're worried about losing Ben Roethlisberger, which I don't think you are, you should not have a – look, your defense is going to be unbelievable for the next uh, foreseeable future. What a going away party at that stadium Monday night. Awesome. Awesome uh, They him. did great for Ben Roethlisberger being able to walk around, prance around, and, you know, say goodbye to all the fans. That was really cool. It was I cool. He had his that. family there. It was emotional for everybody. Mike Tomlin, Ben Roethlisberger. But, you know, I said this last night, and I'll say it again. He's had a plethora of wide receivers, a plethora of incredible running backs, and, and – a plethora of Hall of Fame defenders. Like, so Ben Roethlisberger should have won three Super Bowls. He went to 3 1 1, but he should have won three Super Bowls if he was a better quarterback. Yeah, I have a question for you, though. Whenever he does leave, what do you think about Russell Wilson being in there? There's all kinds of options. Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Baker Mayfield. Uh, I mean, this, this offseason is going to be absolutely incredible. I think that'd be a great landing spot for Russell Wilson. Yeah, I really do. I mean, like you said, lots anybody of, lots with of that targets, defense, he doesn't really have that in Seattle. T.J. Watt and that defense, uh, wow. I mean, you, he's going to be a handful for a very long time. And I would look, he's going to win Defensive Player of the Year. We got that. I was going to say but so. MVP. That's exactly where I was. Allu- what I was going to allude to. So. Defensive player of the year, does he also get most valuable player of the year? I don't know. Our last one, you said it earlier, Joe Burrow, who has really just come alive. They were in last place last year. Now AFC North first place with a record of 10-6. And And Burrow has had two the the past two games over 500 yards and then very, very close to 500 yards. He is just going off. Last November, he went down uh, with a torn ACL. Completely has responded. So, you know, He's done very, very well this season and has brought the Bengals up to there. But does he deserve it? I'll tell you this. This is crazy. He has better numbers than Aaron Rodgers. Unbelievable. Completion percentage? Hmm, I'm trying to think about how. Completion percentage. Aaron Rodgers, 68.6. Joe Burrow, 70.4. TDs, 35 to 34. Interceptions, four by Aaron Rodgers, 14 by Burrow. We know that. Uh that's the only one. That, that's his downfall, the 14 picks. But yards per game, 265, 288 for Burrow. Yards per attempt, 7.8 for Rodgers, 8.9. Passer rating, 111 Rodgers, 108 Burrow. I mean, they're right there. The stat that got me today that I just could not believe is that Joe Burrow has thrown 15 touchdowns of over 30 yards. 15. Wow. Rodgers has thrown two. That's it. like Joe Burrow has a really, really strong case for MVP and in a harder division in a really, really tough division. I just it's it's uh, I, I look, I think that Aaron Rodgers is going to win the MVP. I really do. I don't see how you how you you you'd not vote for him. But Joe Burrow will take some votes. I mean, he he's been spectacular. If he only had if he had less than 10 interceptions, uh, I, I, it would be almost a tie. I will say this, looking at the cast that he has around him as far as Joe Burrow goes, I mean, you you got Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, who had a touchdown last week. I mean, 
you have some solid guys to hand the ball off to or throw to where I'm looking at Green Bay and you just have Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. Yeah, D- uh, Aaron Jones, who was hurt a few games. So uh, both of them have comparable running backs. Both of them have a star wide receiver, Devontae Adams, and uh, of course, Jamar Chase. And, you know, their, their offensive lines. I don't know who's was going to – look, uh, Aaron Rodgers' offensive line is all second stringers. Like, uh, they've been hurt and whatnot, but it's not like Joe Burrow has a fantastic offensive line either. They've, they've – all of that stuff is about even. The, the difference, I think, in Joe Burrow and Aaron Rodgers is that Joe Burrow has played in a really, really tough division. Like, I mean, extremely competitive and tough, tough division. So you got the Bengals, you got the Ravens, and you got the Steelers. And Browns. And Browns. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So those are the four in the AFC North. And, of course, like I said, they're sitting at the top of it, a 10-6 and six record. We'll uh, see. I mean, the thing is, like I said, from going last year to this year and I think accounting for, yeah, I mean, that's doing a lot for the team. Does I say deserve. I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, you know, can he, can he rise above and get it? It's Aaron Rodgers, right? So I, I truly believe Aaron Rodgers is going to win. And there's there's still those Brady believers out there too. Yeah, I mean, as far as passing yards go, uh, let's see, I've got them right here. You got Tom Brady, four thousand nine ninety. Matt Stafford, four thousand six hundred. Justin Herbert, forty six hundred as well. Derek Carr, forty six hundred as well. Joe Burrow's fifth up there with forty right forty six eleven. And then Derek Carr, forty six eighteen. Justin Herbert, 46-31, Stafford. Tom Brady's 300 yards past everybody. But Burrow has 700 more passing yards than Aaron Rodgers. I feel like it's going to be more impressive now that A.B. is gone to see what Tom Brady does and how he can overcome all of that. It's Brady. He can find somebody open. He can extend the play if he needs (laughs) to. But he's getting older, and he needs that protection. So he he, he has a really good guard around him, have a good pocket. But... I'm just wondering who he's going to give the ball to. Yeah, look, Leonard Fournette being out really hurt him. Uh, Godwin it's is – Fournette gone. Godwin gone. Godwin was a gone. monster with him. Yeah, I mean, those are three three huge pieces of the puzzle. You're, you, I don't know if Tom's going to get past the second round on, on Gronk and uh, uh, Mike Evans. I hurt Mike Evans. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's it's going to be tough for Tampa Bay. And that whole, that whole NFC now, it, it's anybody's game. Now, okay – the road goes through Green Bay. All Green Bay has to do is win one playoff game, and they're in the NFC Championship, mm-hmm. and it's going to be at home. It's, it's going to be tough to go up there. But Green Bay is very vulnerable, very, very vulnerable. I, I The NFC is going to be really interesting. It used to be those 5-5, Dallas, Arizona, Green Bay, L.A., and I don't know out of those teams, I guess it's going to be who's the healthiest, really, and Green Bay's healthy, don't get me wrong. And the road goes through there, but – They make one mistake like they did last year, and Tampa Bay won. And there you go. I'm just wondering what happened to Jonathan Taylor. He was the big talk out of the Colts a couple of weeks ago. For MVP? Yeah. Uh, He'll he'll have some talk, too. Uh, It just he didn't show out the the last game that much. And and I think it came down to Burrow overshadowing Jonathan Taylor those two weeks because of what Burrow did. Uh, You know, nine touchdowns, 900 passing yards, zero interceptions. It was just unbelievable. And I think so he leapfrogged Jonathan Taylor. Um uh, so, wow, I, I don't know where you go. Offensive player of the year. How does Jonathan Taylor rack up what he's done and not win an award? Because you could possibly get Aaron Rodgers MVP, Joe Burrow offensive player of the year, and, uh, oh, I guess he w- he'll win the rushing title. That, that, that's what he'll get. And like, ah, there's a lot of incredible, incredible football players and amazing performances this year. Yeah. I, I, it's, just been a, it's just been a great football season. And it comes down to MVP now. And so- so as far as Jonathan Taylor now, yeah, I mean, uh, at the end of the season, right now, regular season stats, he he has 1,734 yards rushed. Uh, I think if he would have broke 2,000. 18 touchdowns. That's crazy. If he <laughs> were, uh, if he would have broke 2,000, he probably would win MVP because we haven't had a 2,000. We, th- those are so rare. If he would have broke 2,000 yards, I think he might have won MVP. And, you know, Derrick Henry was on his way. Oh, Derrick he Henry had around smashed 900, everything. He had a, <laughs> around 900 yards before he went down this season. So imagine if he would have t- oh, sustained healthy, which he is most likely going to be coming back in the postseason. We'll see what he does. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, Jonathan Taylor, rushing title, great for him. I think if he would have got 2,000 yards, he might have won MVP. But as of right now, and I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to play this week. I don't even think Joe Burrow is going to play this week. But uh, Aaron Rodgers wins your MVP. I don't see how you don't vote. Best record in the league. 
I mean, br a broken toe and all. He's just been, he's been the awesome. The thing is, it's like we talk about all these guys being so close, and really the only other <laughs> offensive guy that I can think of would be Joe Burrow, you know? Yep. And I, I still have Aaron Rodgers by a landslide. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers, 35 touchdowns, four picks, and Joe Burrow, 34 touchdowns and 14 picks. That's that. That's the only downfall right there. But, you know, again, the, the, the mind-blowing stat for me is Joe Burrow having 15 30-plus yard touchdowns. Yeah. That is – Wow, <laughs> that that's He's unbelievable. It out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and Aaron Rodgers only has two. That's I mean that's that's just wild. And he has seven hundred. Joe Burrow has seven hundred more passing yards than Aaron Rodgers does this year. That's I mean, and I mean, you said it at the top. Like for somebody coming off a knee injury like that, this is the, one of the he might get comeback player of the year as well. Mm -hmm. Like that's just an unbelievable what he's accomplished and to win that division. Yeah. First, yeah. the Cincinnati Bengals will have the first home game, playoff game, they've had since 1990. So he did Whoa. say, you know, uh, Joe Burrow hopped off the field last week after they won against the Chiefs, and they've been monitoring that knee. But it did come out that he will play if need be against the Browns this weekend, but uh, it, it would just be for higher seeding in the playoffs. As we said, they're the first in the AFC North, so they've already clinched playoff berth. And so I, I honestly don't know how much we're going to see him this weekend. May for May, yeah. Baker Mayfield's going to be out because he's having surgery. He's been needing that desperately. This week's Anyways. games, if we have time, we'll get into them. But they're they're wild, especially for if you're gambling, because people aren't playing. There's games that don't mean anything. And you know, it kind of reminds it's me insane. of a it kind of reminds me of a preseason. <laughs> yeah, it does. it's exactly what it is. Some of the games will be like that. Yeah. Some of them. Uh, quick shout out to Jason, our producer. Uh, Kevin says, "Man, this is the most professional the show has ever looked." So, quick shout out uh, to Jason over there, there we man. Go. Uh, Thanks for the comment, and yes, thank you, Jason. Seriously, and y'all share so the show. Awesome. If y'all are listening on Twitter, on Twitch, on uh, any platform, Facebook, any of them, man, y'all share the show. Uh, give us some likes, man. We appreciate it. And, of course, we're available on the podcast. to Wherever you get your podcast, type in Sports With Balls, and there we are. You know, I was going to say this at the very top of the show, just <laughs> before we get to the next one. I love that I just say Sports With Balls now. And you, <laughs> like, you, you're SWB, I get it. But SWB, baby. <laughs> SWB, that's it. I love it that I'm, like, that's welcome all. into Sports with Balls. <laughs> and, oh, Lauren uh, SWB. cracks me up. Yeah. I love it. Uh, we might have great news for you guys coming up pretty soon. We uh, might. Well, I mean, we, will. We, will, we, we will. We will. We do have great news coming up. And it's starting next week, man. Uh, they, should, should we say something? I don't know. Oh. oh, maybe we'll wait. Maybe we'll wait to the end of the show. I don't know, but like uh, some crazy things are happening. It Monday. Yeah, Monday. Monday we'll do it. Monday. We'll yeah. do it Monday. That that's we'll, we have incredible news. Incredible yeah. news for you guys about Lauren and I uh, and the show. I thought you were supposed to say about Lauren. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> no. What are you about to share about me about that I don't know show. what you're about to say? Uh, I do remember you being in jail. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's a lie because that's never happened. Vicky's on here, and so she wouldn't like that. <laughs> oh, well, hey, what's going on? What um, is going on? Yeah, we got some good news for you guys that? Monday, man. Thanks for uh, tuning in right now, man. We've got a uh, man. We got 30 more minutes. Let's go. Let's go. Let's hit it. All right. So we've gotten to a lot of the NFL, a lot of Antonio Brown discussions. Let's talk about some college football. Uh, you see, uh, you see what was going on Monday night with LSU. Well, and they Braggy had, Bomb. They had no players. Well, I saw Braggy there. Yeah, yeah, but they had no players. Look, that was one of the smartest bets of the entire year. What it, was? It was only Kansas State minus like three points or something, dude. They, LSU had no players. Mm -hmm. Like they were playing with nobody. Like like a, a, a preseason game. Like that was one. Of, if you took Kansas State, you're very very smart. Uh, Vegas lost a ton of money. You know, on that. I mentioned this on the show on Monday and how you can opt out now of bowl games, and I think that's what we're starting to see a lot nowadays. Dude. And I was saying this yesterday. This NIL stuff and the transfer portal. The they, transfer portal. Dude, that they, is the huge they have part got of it. To stop. That, you know what? And that's also going into the coaching carousel. I was listening to the show. This yep. podcast on. Uh, coaches Jim and John Harbaugh and basically how Jim's gone to the NFL and then come back down and now you know led Michigan uh, to be to be the best team in that conference well well obviously losing to Georgia but uh, he said that basically when he signed up to be in the college five five seasons ago or whenever it was he was like I feel like I'm back in the NFL now with the transfer portal. Yep. I have to deal with guys coming and going, coming and going. When I knew they came here, oh, they're going to be here for three, four solid years, maybe five if they have a red shirt. 
Well, and that's why I brought it up yesterday because Jim Harbaugh, there's, there's there's rumors about him coming back to the NFL because right. it's way more structured. College with the NIL stuff and the transfer portal is going off the chain. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, people are just – I said this yesterday. There can be a little bitty car dealership in Mobile, Alabama or wherever that's going to offer somebody $10 million and boom, because there's no cap. So these little – like, they can get – they're uh, recruiting players with money. Like, you know, I thought that was illegal. But yeah. now it's NIL deals and everybody entering mm-hmm. transfer portals. It's just I mean, you they have to have a, 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 a government, some, some, a commissioner like the NFL. Somebody needs to regulate what's about to happen in college or it is going to be a free-for-all. Like the last great uh, – uh, How much do you think a college player should cap out at? I would say a million. You know, like for the great ones. And look, I've said this before. People that get the, – For the, Evans Young. The players, the players that get NIL deals are top – they're elite. They're the top, you know, 1% of all college, and I understand that. But you can't just be offering people X amount of dollars and nobody – there's no regulation on it. There has to be some sort of regulation on all this stuff. I'm not saying that colleges should have a cap, but you can't just have kids moving everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like, it, I mean, there's no structure, no education. If you thought education in sports was bad prior to this – now there really is no education. I know. And I, I know a lot of people are for the kids or the athletes, rather, student athletes getting the money because it's like, okay, all the coaches are, you know, the faculty are. Why they're pouring all the money? They're they're getting all the students add to the games, basketball, football, whatever it, sport it is. So they should be allowed some of that money that's being made on ticket sales, merchandise, etc. Then again, you just look at what is happening to their actual education, like you yep. alluded to. So there's two sides to it. Um, Going to be interesting. Go for one, which one you went. But it affects the coaches. It affects yep. the coaches, and that's what we were saying earlier. It affects as longevity, far as the guys, everything. transfer portal, like knowing what players you have to play with. And that's whenever you start seeing teams – not producing as well. You're gonna going see, down. You're going to you see, see players this. start quitting in the middle of the season and go, I'm entering a transfer portal. <laughs> like, Antonio Brown. You know, it's, it's, and, <laughs> and, and you said it earlier. Antonio, yep. I mean, and you said it earlier. Antonio Brown was not mad because he it was mad because he was not getting the money. targets, right? Yeah, targets. And the targets are what Money are drives people crazy, money. I tell you. Yep. So just have none like like us and just uh, have a little podcast. Kevin Anthony said he did a, <laughs> he did a shotgun beer with uh, Breggs at the game. I saw his pictures on social media. Oh, you so did? Like, How was it, Kevin? Did you enjoy tell that? Him, tell him I said, what's up? I love me some Breggs. Hey, uh, Kevin, I got to ask you, if you tried the salsa, tell me how it was. Oh, I, the Breg. I have never tried it. I love spicy. I heard it was not spicy. It's just more like a, it's more flavorful than anything. If you tried it, comment. I want to know what you thought about it. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> have you what's tried your, it? What's have your, you? I like the Her- Herdez, Herndez salsa. No, but have you tried the be- the Breggy no, Bomb? No, 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 no. I don't like. Uh, man, my kids are so picky. I can only cook certain things in a certain way. I can't put any salsa on anything. They'd have me. Uh, they wouldn't eat. Cole's never had salsa. Uh, n- yeah, he he likes salsa. He likes uh, red salsa. So that's what this is. Well, I know, but like he has <laughs> specific types. Like he gets it out of the refrigerator. He knows what the bottle looks like at the grocery store. If it's any other bottle, he ain't, he ain't having it. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you kids get, are kids are picky. Kids are picky. You got dang that, but that's what you got to fix it now while they're kids, and when they grow up, they'll make, try more things. <laughs> make them eat some like bigger palate. He asked me the other day if I wanted to do the hot chip challenge. I was like, "You're crazy." What's the hot chip challenge? The ghost well, pepper? No, or yeah, what? The, yeah. You you uh, order it. Uh, this one chip, uh, ghost pepper, uh, whatever. You order it, and it comes to you, and you film yourself eating this thing. I'm one. like, "You're nuts." I already have heartburn. I got to take Prilosec. Like, I, there's no way I'm eating a hot <laughs> chip. <laughs> fall the thing over. Is for me, the thing is for me, I'm like, in the hospital. I'm a healthy. Eater. Eater, but uh, don't get me wrong. Give me a bag of hot Cheetos, and I will gar- yeah. scarf those down. But man, like, <laughs> and I've always and I don't, you know, I don't eat chicken. I don't really. Did eat you meat. ever light them on fire? Do you know that works? What? Yeah. So you never seen that on like? Well, I say TikTok, but I saw it before TikTok. You can light those hot Cheetos on fire like a candle, and they burn. Does it smell like a hot Cheeto? It smells terrible. <laughs> and they and they burn the whole thing. Like, have you ever done this? Jason? Like a candle? No, me neither. It's cr- and I'm like, I've I, never seen I, that. And you eat that? What are you YouTubing? <laughs> What are you doing with your free time, Jeffrey Michael? Trying to stay away from Antonio Brown drama. Creating <laughs> <laughs> like, drama of your own. Just yeah. please, you're getting a new roof right now. Don't burn if, that down look, with a hot Look, if you got Cheeto. hot Cheetos at home tonight, take a lighter, pull one out, and light it. You're going to be shocked. You'll be like, what? oh, my. It lights. You can walk around the house. You with are it. telling people to put hazards in their houses. Oh, sorry. No, go outside. Go outside. <laughs> Go outside. We've already had 2020. We made it through 2021. Let's not do it again. Kevin says Fritos are highly flammable. Uh, text me later about how I know this. Like, oh, my gosh. Oh, like, 
Back to sports with ball. <laughs> sports with uh, flaming, okay, flaming Anthony hot chips. Okay, Kevin Anthony says the Breggy Bomb salsa is average. I would buy it again, though, because I like and support Breggs. Yay. Alex Bregman. There we go. Uh, third baseman of the Astros could be switching over to shortstop, but uh, we never know because... We, first, we got to get the CBA resolved, right? Before yeah. Before any MLB activity We've happens. From, We've stayed away from I that. I miss baseball. Me too. I miss oh, baseball. Someone posted a stat the other day. I, I don't know if it was like home runs or, or what it was, but I was like, I just glanced at it and I was like, I miss you. The what? I miss, I miss you. you. The Diamond. worst part about sports or the worst time in sports is right after the Super Bowl. There's no, there's no, highly flammable. Yeah. There's no, sorry, I just saw that yeah. comment. There's no, uh, there's no football. The NBA is right at half. Oh, yeah. Jason's saying soccer. Yeah. So, but, the, man, there's like 400 leagues in soccer. I can't follow it. There, there's one, there's one it's, league. No. It's just MLS. <laughs> oh, no. He's talking about international. He's talking about See, Madrid and Barcelona. Gotta, and, huh? England. Yeah, England. England. No. See, I got to learn the, about this, look, too, because I don't know the about last time all he, of these teams. There's so many teams. But the thing is, too, it's not like, oh, they're playing for the Broncos and they're playing for Seahawks. It's like, no. These guys will also go on another teams and play, and they form that team, and then they'll go to another team. I do not understand. It's confusing. The last time England won was, 19, was 1966. Down. I know that. <laughs> because of our, because of Jason? Yeah. All right. That's why I know, but, man, yeah, soccer. Uh, but I'm, I'm just saying, like, in America at least, yeah, uh, Jason's from, you know, England, so right, that's where right. he's from, so he loves soccer over there. But for America at least over here in the, in the mainland, it's like – what? When football's over, it, there's it's it's basketball and hockey and basketball. I really don't pay attention to until about ten games left in the regular season. So it's it's really boring until baseball. Well, cranks it's funny up. because a lot of people think that basketball starts like on Christmas Day because there's all those games that you're watching after you eat on Christmas. There's uh there's pickleball now. Pickle? What the? Yeah, we can go watch some pickleball. Go play pickleball. What? Yeah. I like pickles. All I right. love pickles. Let's uh, get back to what we got going <laughs> on here with SWB, as Jeff likes to say. Let's go. Sorry, I lost the I lost the feed for a minute. Sorry, guys. All right, uh, yeah, let's get back to sports with balls. <laughs> I feel like there was something I was gonna say before we moved on to the next topic. Oh, I just remember when Jason, uh, I first met him, and he told me about sipping tea back home. Like it's a real thing in England. Like y'all oh, really yeah. do sip the tea. Uh, I, I was there for a long time straight out of high school and like oh I yeah because you played ball overseas. yeah That's man right. it was it's tea and jam and bread and butters and like man, it's just it's you called the loo the bathroom right the loo yeah <laughs> I, I stay the loo sometimes I'm going, you do? The, I'm going to the loo yeah I mean if you're around like your girlfriend or whatever you don't want to say I'm going to the bathroom Ooh, like going to the loo somebody back on bumble <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> no no we're done with those bumble chats uh, all right let's I'm, get to my feed's messed up but that's all right it's okay. I Monday, can't read night, Monday night. Monday night. Monday night. We will see the last college ball of this season. It is the college football playoff national championship, and it is a rematch of the SEC championship game. We got number three, Georgia, versus number one, Alabama. January 10th, Monday at 7 p.m. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know if you're a sports fan. So the last matchup, these guys, though, they're both uh, sitting at 13-1. and one. Their records are the last matchup was December 4th, and Bryce Young went off. Uh, this The final was 41-24 Alabama. People forget, I forgot myself, just because it seemed like so much so long ago, and then there were other, you know, bowl games in between that. So let's get to it as far as the stats. We think that uh, Bryce Young, if he were a senior, he'd be going into the NFL oh, first yeah. round. Uh, he was Number 26 of 44 for 431 yards with three touchdowns. And this was against Georgia, a very, very good defensive unit in the Bulldogs. Now, Alabama rolled over Cincinnati in the Cotton Bowl, 27 to 6. Georgia rolled over Michigan in the Orange Bowl, 34 to 11. And we can go through the lines here in a minute. But Jim Mackingvale, Mattress Mac, of course, you know what he does? Puts money down on the game. And you know who he put it down on? Alabama. Yep. 1.2 million on the Crimson Tide, and uh, if Bama wins, he'll earn the 1.5 million. It's weird that uh, they have Georgia favored, and it's, it's Georgia minus two and a half, considering that Alabama beat the brakes off of them in the last game, like embarrassed them, like flat out embarrassed Georgia, the number one defense in the country, and Alabama has the Heisman Trophy winner. I guess it's because Alabama is missing their number one wide receiver. Totally understand that, but. 
Nick Saban's team's going to be ready. I, 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 this is going to be a fun football game. And for those of y'all that are tired of watching Georgia and Alabama, look, these are the two best teams in football, hands down. Like, I'm sorry it's a rematch, but they are. They are the best teams in football, and going at it for the national championship, it's going to be a fun game. Yeah. Like, it really is going to be a blast to watch. I, I do expect a really close game, uh, but I think Alabama wins by seven. Okay. All right. Uh, well, the Bulldogs are the favorites, two and a half, uh, yeah, two and a half point weird. favorites, and the total is a 52 points. Bryce so. Young has 4,500 yards passing and 46 touchdowns. Are you what? He's a sophomore, guys. <laughs> oh my He's a God, sophomore. Dude. He that kid is unbelievable. Uh I, I don't care who he has out there wide receiver, he's gonna carve him up. Like uh, I know the my, defense is, I like, know my brother can't stand him just because uh he's an OU fan, he's a big sooner, but at the same time, it, it, you can't you can't unmatch his greatness. You have to see it for what he is and what he's able to do. He really knows how to extend the play. And it's his. I mean, if you he heard, can use his <laughs> legs too. You talk about you talk about all the passing yards. He uses his legs as well. He's phenomenal. Forty six touchdowns and only five picks. That that that's unreal. That is unbelievable. I don't care. Like that is just unreal. And that's Aaron Rodgers. He's on this. he's got the off the field stuff, man. This kid has it all. He's well spoken. He dresses well. He holds himself well. Like the intangible. The intangibles sure. this kid has as a, as a sophomore are unmatched. Like it's unreal. Uh, he blows uh, Trevor Lawrence out the out the door. He was uh, Nick Saban's like, thank you, thank you for being yeah, you. Jeez, you make my job really yeah. easy. They are uh, definitely one hundred percent going to be ranked number one next year with him coming back. Uh, it's just phenomenal. I got I got Alabama. So I was going to say uh, University of Georgia. The Georgia Bulldogs are seven and one against the spread in their last eight games away from home uh, which they will be away and then uh, Bama the Crimson Tide are five and one against the spread in their last six contests as underdogs I'm going the over to 52 points I'm going over are. I'm going over I think these teams are going to go at it and I just I, think I'm, I'm going to go with the over too we saw these low scoring game well low for these teams in the cotton and orange bowl but these guys going back at it. I mean, the last time they played each other it was 41-24. Yeah, I just yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I I I think this is gonna be a fun game to watch. I think it'll be very competitive, at least for the first three quarters. Uh, but eventually, Alabama's offense will wear Georgia's defense down. They're gonna be out there too much. I mean, that's just that's that's just my feeling. Look, I, I'm not a professional gambler, so don't you know, don't put your house up on it. But I think that Alabama is gonna take this again. It's gonna be look. I'm gonna be eyes glued. It's a must watch game for me. College football. These are the two best teams hands down so I'm gonna watch it sounded like you had a little occasion in there did you do who best did I do the uh, uh you did the, the <laughs> oh, sorry yeah no you're good I never heard that some, occasion some poogie come motif out. all right all right <laughs> yeah so that's actually gonna be taking place right after we get off the air on Monday or get off yeah. the air on Monday Can't rather wait. so woo 7 p.m. let's go at least central time now getting back to the NFL and some crazy news uh, before we get out of here so there's someone suing the Jets and the Giants. <laughs> I gotta pull this up. This is crazy. It's ridiculous. I love so, it. there's a fan that's suing these two organizations, demanding that both teams leave Jersey and not be in and play their games in New York, as they are known as the New York Giants and uh, the New York Jets. But so this is a recording to a report out of the New York Daily News. Six billion dollar lawsuit. <laughs> a is class coming? action class action lawsuit that they that they <laughs> abandon MetLife Stadium in Jersey like I said and go to play in New York by 2025 Abdil Suro of New York City filed a class action lawsuit in the US District Courts against the NFL the New York Giants the New York Jets and MetLife Stadium this is his contention the Giants and Jets playing in New Jersey are improperly and illegally benefiting from the use of New York in their names. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How much money? I, I did not think this would outrage fans this much. I'm gonna sue. Look. Like, who else <laughs> is so mad about this? Dude, this is this I is mean, the most okay. 2021 thing, even though so, it's 22. Like, I've seen like this is I know, nuts. I, it this is. is nuts. Man. Like it's super. So I like obviously we live in Houston. And for damages, six, six million in damages. So <laughs> we're we're located in Houston right now, right? Yeah. So say that the Texans. We're diehard Texans fans, but they were literally located uh, two hours north. Of it's here. like me suing. Uh, the, it's like me suing Nashville uh, for the Titans. 
Like, you know, like, you know what? They, they completely changed the organization. Yeah, These are just moved into a different, just, different part of town. He's suing for damages. What is it? So, Who damaged it? So uh, just to give you a little bit of history on it, too, uh, the Giants played in East Rutherford since 1976, and they moved across the Hudson River after, you know, playing the glory years at the Yankee Stadium at the Bronx. And then the Jets became tenants uh, with the Giants in New Jersey in 1984. Oh uh, that's where they are playing at the Shea Stadium in Queens. So, like you said, the lawsuit seeks two billion in monetary damages and four billion in punitive damages, <laughs> and it claims that the two teams, including false advertising and deceptive practices, the lawsuit claims that the plaintiff and the class, which includes all Giants and Jets fans that live in New York, have suffered quote unquote mental and emotional damage yep. including depression sadness and anxiety as the result of the defendant's conduct uh, so <laughs> yeah the 49ers you can see yeah, i mean yeah what uh, oakland san like gold, golden state not city really like, in san francisco uh, golden state like i mean come right. on dude like he has depression and anxiety because they're playing in New Jersey I have and never calling heard themselves this in New my, York. You know what this reminds me of? This yeah. reminds me of the first time that someone ever sued somebody over something so common sense like. Uh, coffee. That's, that's immediately went to Guys, burning coffee. That's, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> McDonald's coffee. Yeah, yeah. He took a sip and it burned his tongue and so he sued him. I just, like watched, I just watched that Seinfeld episode yesterday. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I just watched this the Seinfeld. This coffee is oh hot. My God. Cautious. So now we have to be cautious with everything. Be bomb, bomb. Oh my gosh, if you're going to be a fan of the Dallas Cowboys, oh, sorry, they're actually in Arlington. Oh, are you going to get so mad now? Yeah, like, Kevin, what? Ke Kevin, look, we went the whole show without bringing them up. You talked about them earlier. Did I really? Yes. What did I say? You love talking about them. I didn't say anything good. <laughs> yeah, I think you said uh, maybe a landing. No. Oh, no. Oh, we were, we oh were yeah, I said, Antonio, well, no, I said Antonio Brown could, could land in the Cowboys, but I said it as a meme. Like, I don't think that, that. I mean, maybe. I don't know. But we went the whole show without me talking bad about the Cowboys, so I guess I'll continue not talking bad about the Cowboys. All right. All right. So uh, we got a slate. Uh, let me know what you think about this dispute, by the way, as far as uh, oh, just hysterical. This, this claim, this file claim. Are you really that upset it's in a different city? Anxiety and depression. It's real. I know those are real, Golly, but about this? Yeah. So that guy sits at home. About and this? He sits at home in New York. He's like, why are they in New Jersey? Like, what? <laughs> If you have that much money, go buy the team. Oh, my gosh. Go uh, buy the dang team. Do it yourself. Hey, we can skip the Cowboys if you want this week. Carry on, Kevin. All right. Oh, we will. No. Good, uh, good well, luck. Good speaking luck. Of, speaking of yep. Saturday, so we do uh, not have a game tonight as we normally would. Uh, we got two. We got a slate of games on Saturday. One at three thirty, Chiefs at the Broncos, and then at night, seven fifteen, we got Cowboys at the Eagles. And like you said, depleted teams. Not really. I don't know how much oh, we're no. going to see of Mahomes. That cow, the Chiefs Broncos game is going to be good, and the Cowboys Eagles game, game of the year. So like that's going to well, be well. Cowboys fantastic. Eagles, yes, but do you really think they're going to utilize Mahomes as much going against Denver? It depends on uh, what the score is. Yeah, they need to win that game. They have to win that game in order of seating wise. So they're going to play like those. Both those games are on Saturday for the specific reason that they Isn't that need crazy? to play in the AFC. You have like five teams trying to get in still. Mm -hmm. They're all so tight. All right, so uh, the, uh, Sunday's games, yeah, we got Packers at Lions. Eh. Colts at the Jaguars. Washington at Giants. Oh, sorry, Giants fans. Uh, it's not actually. It's going to be city over in New Jersey, but uh, Giants. <laughs> uh, Cubs. Uh, Cubs. Cubs, whoa. Oh, we were talking about baseball. Chicago Bears at uh, Minnesota Vikings. And then uh, we got Tennessee Titans at here at the Texans. So uh, we'll see how that goes down. If the Texans can knock out the Titans, then they won't have that number one seed. Uh, we got the Steelers at the Ravens, Bengals at the Browns, uh, San Francisco 49ers at the Rams. And uh, are any of these matchups sticking out to you? Nope. <laughs> yeah. Panthers at Bucks. And that's what Seahawks I was saying. Seahawks at Cardinals. I was saying earlier. Patriots at Dolphins. Gambling wise, look, the Steelers game, Ben Roethlisberger's last game, it's going to be in Baltimore. I hope they give him an ovation. Uh, they should. He's played plenty of games for Cleveland or against Cleveland, which is now Baltimore. So it should be a lot of fun. That, that's going to be an interesting Our, game. Uh, the Bills need a win, so they're playing the Jets. That ought to be interesting. 49ers and Rams game will be fun. 
Patriots Dolphins game should well the Dolphins can't get in the playoffs so I don't know but like there's storylines in a bunch of these uh, but you know honestly it's all about that Cowboys and uh, Eagles game that's 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 gonna be a blast and our last regular season game of 2021 the 2021 season rather Chargers at the Raiders well, actually, and, I think that's gonna be a really good well there's game. a way uh, I saw I saw something there's a way that both these teams could actually just kneel on the ball for 15 16 plays each and if they tie they both get in the playoffs. That, some crazy things would have to happen. They're both nine and seven. That, that would be uh, very interesting. But look, man, uh, we want to thank you, you guys for paying attention to us uh, for this hour sports with balls, man. Uh, SWB. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Antonio Brown, man, please get some help. Uh, just stop with the drama. Stop showing text messages to everybody. Um, but any uh, last thoughts, Lauren Leal? Yeah, uh, just piggybacking off of that for Antonio Brown. I'm excited to see what our MVP candidates and if we're going to end up correct with our Rodgers pick. We'll see about that, and we will see you on Monday. Yeah, sports with balls. All right, y'all. Uh, look, I got to thank a few sponsors, man. Uh, first off, let, well, it's your turn. All right. You want to do construction concepts? You want me to? I'll do it. Construction concepts, changing corporate culture, one design at a time. From hospitality to corporate luxury retail and medical facilities, their team of experts can update or create a space that exceeds your expectation. Give them a call, 713-589-2682. Mark and, he, Mark and Josh over there at buildithouston.com. Throw it back to Grant. Can we still do this? No. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> 7 well, o'clock. On the dot. We're out of here, y'all. Jeff Michael, Lauren Leal. See ya. Have a good weekend. Let me get a quick picture. And the in that pokey man it man it's like man. Seven thirteens back at it again. I jump in my six four and let the top dine. Drunk hitting hard when I swing through H time. Cup full of oil and orange cause sweet. Cause this is how we do it in that seven one three. My can